US sales of plant-based milk rose 17% to $2.3 billion this year, and data shows that almond milk is the market leader and is most popular, with oat milk edging past soy milk for second place. Soy milk sales have declined by 4.5%. Now this study looked at four types of unsweetened plant milks, almond, soy, rice and coconut milk, and compared their nutritional values with those of cow's milk. Researchers found that rice milk had relatively little nutrition. Coconut milk had no protein and few calories, with most of them coming from fat. Almond milk, despite its monounsaturated fatty acid content, helping to reduce low-density lipoprotein, bad cholesterol, had a need for complementary sources of food to provide essential nutrients. But soy milk came out a clear winner, as researchers found it had the most balanced nutritional profile. Quote, it is quite clear that nutritionally soy milk is the best alternative for replacing cow's milk in the human diet. So now let's hear from Dr. Michael Greger as he shares which plant milk is the healthiest. Almond milk, good or bad? Well, you know the answer to this. Anyone who's read my book, How Not to Die, the answer to a question, is this healthy? The answer is another question, which is compared to what? Compared to dairy milk? Absolutely. Compared to soy milk? No. So it's good compared to cow's milk, bad compared to soy milk. Um, so I encourage people to drink unsweetened soy milk. That is the healthiest uh, milk out there. Of course, you don't have to drink any milk at all, right? I mean, still processed food, but if you are, are going to um, use milk for some healthy purpose, right? If you put it on Fruit Loops, it doesn't matter what kind of milk. It's all bad, right? But if you're using that milk to moisten your, uh, your oat groats in the morning, um, well, then unsweetened soy is probably the best. So let's take a look at the studies Dr. Greger is referring to. In this study, drinking soy milk cut circulating estrogen levels in half, which significantly decreases breast cancer risk. This partly explains why Chinese and Japanese women have such low rates of breast cancer. And what was most surprising is that researchers found that estrogen levels stayed down a month or two even after the women stopped drinking the soy milk which suggests you don't have to consume soy every day to have the cancer protective benefit. Similar results were also found with soy milk consumption in this study too. And also in men. This study found that tofu and soy milk were more protective against prostate cancer than unfermented soy foods such as tempeh. Tofu and soy milk consumption were associated with around 30% reduction in risk. Whereas interestingly there didn't appear to be any protection linked to fermented soy foods. Dr. Greger in a recent lecture mentioned surprising data that backed up this study's findings. So let's take a listen. Um, the benefits attributed to soy, many of those studies are done with even isolated soy protein powder. Um, the, the study showing a significant improvement in bone mineral density with soy versus dairy was all was done in soy milk. It wasn't a whole food at all, but just those soy isoflavones would improve uh, menopausal symptoms, improve bone health, decrease breast cancer risk, um, kind, of, kind of has the best of both worlds as kind of a selective estrogen receptor modulator. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below and subscribe for more upcoming videos.